Hi, my name's Suzanne Day and I run a charity and a business for stopping domestic violence and I'm also a healer. And today I'm going to read um, about um, the Anzac that I was proud of because it's Anzac Day today. And um, okay, so the Anzac that I was proud of. Arthur Watkins, he was my grandfather, was a funny, happy man and he lived in Surrey Hills in Sydney with his family. And he got his middle name from Sydney Harbour Bridge, that was his middle name, um, which was being built at the time of his birth. And he called, he was called to help in the Second World War and he had also been in the Boer War and the First World War. He was with the Light Brigade. Um, so when the call came to be in the Second World War, he was there to lend a hand. And he was Australian born, and he was in the Instru Australian Imperial Army, but he moved to New Zealand after the war as he had met my grandmother in Wellington during the war, um, in Wellington, New Zealand, while he was helping with the war effort. And he met Ruth, his wife, in Wellington, New Zealand, and she was also helping in the war effort. And it was love at first sight, and their marriage was a really, really beautiful love story. Like, they always walked hand in hand. They were always really beautiful to each other. Um, my grandfather was constantly kissing my grandmother. They, it was just a really beautiful relationship. And they were always laughing and being fun and, and, and very happy. And Ruth's father, he was a pastor for a pedestrian church. And later, after the war, they settled in Auckland at St Helier's, a small beachside village just outside of the city, on the city side. And they had three children. And during um, my grandfather's time in the war, he was actually in the ambulance corps and he saved many lives. And he was also at Gallipoli too. And he spent a lot of time in Papua New Guinea. And in his time there, he helped to save thousands of Australian and New Zealand soldiers who were injured during the war. And he met the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, as they were called then, for their great effort. And these um, Papua New Guinea men, they helped to carry injured men out of the jungle, saving their lives. And my grandfather was so moved by what these men did that near the end of his life, his last dying wish was to actually go back there and speak to the chief and personally thank him. Um, so, and it was, um, this chief lived in, in the jungle up on top of a mountain top. Um, and so my mum and my granddad, granddad, granddad went to uh, Papua New Guinea and they hired a small plane to get up to this small village on this mountain top. Um, to where the chief was and when he saw the chief he said a heartfelt thank you from all New Zealand and Australian Australians and he gave him a big hug and he shook his hand and um, he, he said thank you so much for what you did for Australia and New Zealand soldiers who were injured in the jungle and my twin sister actually has a photo of my granddad and my mum on top of the mountain with the chief and his tribe. Um, but the thing I remember about my granddad um, was that he never missed an opportunity to show someone that they mattered and they had value. And he spread joy and kindness and happiness everywhere he went. He made a difference to other people's lives. He was continually giving and being kind and funny, and he made others laugh and feel good. And being his grandchildren, we were absolutely spoilt rotten. Nothing was too much for us. Our grandfa grandfather and our grandmother absolutely adored us, and we spent a lot of time with them, and they were really kind to us. And um, one thing he used to do, he used to take us to the Imperial Arcade that was in Auckland off Queen Street and there was an ice cream shop there and he would tell the lady in the shop, he'd say, look, this is my grandchildren, that scoop's not big enough. And we'd have like three scoops of ice cream, um, of this massive ice cream that he would um, organise for us to have. Yeah, um, so that was one of the things he used to do. And 
everybody loved my grandfather because he was so kind and he was always giving and helping other people in any way that he could like nothing was enough and he gave away he was a great fisherman he in fact the whole village would wait on the beach waiting for him to come back um when he retired he was a fisherman and he would row over to Rangitoto which is out um off Auckland that's a big island and um he would have a boat load full of fish bring it back in to the shore and all the whole village would be waiting there for him and he'd hand out fish to everybody um and we we were always eating fish at his house um fresh fish and um yeah so and he also had a huge garden fruit and veggie garden and he also gave away heaps of that too and we used to actually when we stayed our nan would give us a bucket we'd go down to the to the garden and fill it with our favorite fruit and veggies that we wanted to have for dinner or we wanted to have in the next few days um and he also had beautiful flowers and my grandmother she was a great cook she made scones cakes jams homemade lemonade roast dinners soups fish fish cakes, um, battered fish and chips with lemon straight from the garden. Um, and my grandmother was also a really beautiful knitter and a crochet and she gave away a lot of her creations. I mean, we got a lot too and we got toys with all knitted and crocheted, but she also gave a lot to the neighborhood and all her friends and everyone in, in the village. And when my, me and my twin sister visited there, the whole village would donate things to us from their shops. We'd be walking up from the bus stop and um, all these people would come running out of their shops and say, Pop, bring them in. What do they want? They can have anything they want. So we would be spoilt with ball, balls and puzzles and lollies and hats and things for the beach and books. Um... Yeah, so we were really spoiled. And um, our grandparents also spent a lot of time with us and they were really proud of us and they continually showed us how much we were loved and valued. And um, yeah, so my pop, he gave away his fish, his vegetables, his fruit, his flowers and he helped others any way he could. He was also a boat, boat, boat builder and um, he helped people with their gardens and he also made beautiful stone walls and in St Hulia's there's still beautiful stone walls that he made um, for people in their gardens but he was a real joy to be with he was really he was always fun and he was also Santa um, he was Santa Claus for over 20 years and um, that was in the New Zealand um, farmer's store, which is one of the big department stores in New Zealand. And he was used to be the Santa Claus in Auckland City in the main um, department, main um, farmer's department store that was based in Auckland. Um, and he, he, he was great with kids. He was really lovely with kids. And as his grandchildren, we were spoilt with lots of time um, spent on us playing games in, in his garden or at the beach on the swings and the slide and he'd get the whole beach involved and we'd make massive sand castles and all the kids on the beach would all be there with their mums and dads and they'd all help we'd make this massive sand castle and um, we'd walk around the rocks play in the park swim in the ocean and we'd also ride on top of the farmer's store there was like a playground with all these bicycles so we'd ride around on the roof on the rooftop in these little trikes when we were little and then we'd go to the cafeteria with our grand granddad and grandmother and uh, and we'd, we were always every day we would have ice cream which was really great after we went to the beach he'd He'd insist that we had to have ice cream, which was fine with us. Um, and he would take pleasure in introducing us to all his friends, and he was very proud of us. And um, there were always funny games. He used to put big pumpkins in our in our beds and say, "Oh, look, there's a big big uh, lump in your bed. I wonder what that is." We go, "Yeah, we know what that is, Pop. That's from you. It's a pumpkin." And even at dinner time, like he'd, with the plates and move around the table, we were just always laughing. In fact, our jaw used to ache 
because we'd laughed so much when we went to stay. Um, so it was really, it was really lovely. Um, and he also played the piano and we'd wake up in the morning at our home um, and we lived on the North Shore and we'd hear Pop on, the, on our piano and he'd be playing Walsing Matilda. So we'd rush out of our bedroom and sit next to him on the stool and we'd sing uh, Walsing Matilda with him. So yeah, so if you have an Anzac that you're proud of, what stories can you tell about him this Anzac Day? Because this is a great way to remember them and um, get that message out there and to not forget what they gave up and what they actually fought for, which was freedom. And at the moment, we're actually in a battle. The whole world is in a battle at the moment uh, because we've got the cabal and the um, New World Order trying to be brought in. So it's like World War Three. So, and I'd, I'd actually like to ask all the Anzacs that are passed and and also the ones that are still alive, to talk to relatives and remind them that we're currently in another battle. And I'd like the Anzacs to help send the intent and the message for everyone on earth to stand up and to fight for our lives, for our freedom. Because um, if we don't win this battle, um, we will lose our freedom forever. And that's ha that battle is happening at the moment because they're trying to bring in the new world order. So, yeah, I'd just like everyone to stand up. Okay, thank you.